It's a real honor, and we've been looking forward to this trip for a long time now. Um, yeah. A few weeks ago, my cousin Max and I were talking about how excited we were for this trip, and we came up with our three main objectives. The first was to drink a real Irish drink in a real Irish pub. The second was that we wanted to give a speech. And the third was that we wanted to get to know, to really know, an Irish girl. <laughs> And after today's speech, we will complete the first two, but we still need help with the third. There was a fourth item on my list. I, while I was here, I wanted to learn a bit of Irish, and uh, Minister Dinahan was kind enough to teach me a couple of words. If they are inappropriate, uh, please blame the minister. <laughs> Go, Rev, Ma, Ogut, Os, Bukt, On, Falta. Is more. More. <laughs> is more on an or dumb of that on show enough egg arboretum John F. Kennedy. We are both incredibly honored to be with you tonight. My name is Max Kennedy. My grandfather is Bobby, and my great uncle is President Kennedy, who came here 50 years ago and to whom this arboretum is dedicated. Uh, my name is Chris Kennedy. I'm Max's first and favorite cousin, and also one of Bobby's grandkids. Although it's a bit unusual, we are going to try to deliver the speech together. Chris and I came to Ireland to retrace our great uncle's footsteps and explore this great country together. So we thought it would be appropriate to deliver this speech with each other. Furthermore, politics in our family has always been a group effort. Last summer, my cousins and I, including Max, uh, Grace, and Kylie, who are here today as well, we walked the streets of Fall River, Massachusetts, for my cousin Joe, handing out bumper stickers and waving signs, and he was elected to Congress. And when my great uncle Jack ran for president, my uncles and aunts did the same thing for him. It is fitting, then, that Chris and I stand before you together as a team, representing the third generation of Kennedys. Although we are both still students, we and the rest of our cousins back at home uh, <coughs> hope we can honor our uncles and our aunts, our grandparents and our great-grandparents, by working together to confront the challenges facing young people in both the United States and here in Ireland. I think an important step in this quest is to come on this trip to Ireland to walk the path our forefathers walked 50 years ago. It has helped strengthen the bond between our generation and the generations before us, and the events 50 years ago still remain a defining feature in our lives. As many of you know, President Kennedy said his four days in Ireland were the happiest of his life. Not only did he feel a special bond with his country, but it has become clear to Chris and I that the Irish people feel a special bond to him. Visiting the sites that he visited, reading the words that he uttered, and most importantly, meeting the people that he met has helped me feel closer to the great uncle that I never had the chance to meet, and better understand why he held so much affection for this island. Jack said as he boarded the plane that he wanted to come back in the spring, but as we all know, he was unable to do so. But even though he didn't have the opportunity to return, I think it is amazing that the Irish people were able to create such an appropriate and beautiful memorial. This arboretum represents what he stood for in a way no other memorial could. Just as we can still see and feel the lasting effects of President Kennedy's visit to Ireland, so too can we see in the trees around us the enduring results of actions taken almost 50 years ago. So much came out of those four hectic days in 1963, just as so much has emerged from the small, fragile seeds and saplings that were planted here almost 50 years ago. There's an anecdote that President Kennedy included in many of his speeches that seems pertinent now. He mentioned the great French Marshal Leote, who once asked his gardener to plant a tree. The gardener objected that the tree was slow growing and would not reach maturity for a hundred years. The Marshal replied, in that case, there is no time to lose. Plant it this afternoon. We mostly included that quote because it was the only one we could find that mentioned trees. <laughs> uh, but it really is relevant. That short story emphasizes the importance of patience in politics and the understanding that action taken today can have can benefit or hurt future generations. Many of President Kennedy's actions were truly selfless and that they did not benefit him or even his contemporaries, but were instead implemented to help future generations. It is this kind of foresight that led to this arboretum. The people who planted these great trees around us could not have done it without considering how people living dozens of years in the future would experience this space. It is this foresight 
that has inspired countless Irish men and women to work hard to ensure that their own children could have even better lives. It is also notable, I think, that so many of these trees came from other countries. While he was here, President Kem Kennedy emphasized the importance of the global community. And so I think it is important that this memorial, while truly Irish, has an international component. Like my great uncle, we have been in Ireland now for four amazing and unforgettable days. We have had quite a few adventures with our newfound friends, both in Dublin and here in New Ross. This time has helped me better appreciate my Irish heritage, uh, my roots, and Max and I truly feel welcomed and now understand how and why that trip 50 years ago affected President Kennedy so significantly. Thank you so much for all the people who showed us around. Um, you guys have been truly wonderful and you have truly made us feel at home. Thank you so much.